A crisis is not a nightmare we wake up from. It's a reality we wake up to. It reminds us that we never know what the next moment will bring. It reminds us that we are fragile beings. It represents a threat to someone or something important to us, maybe even to our very existence. A crisis triggers anxiety, pain, and distress. How do we manage our thoughts and feelings in difficult times so we can get through and maybe even come out on the other side stronger? Here are five ways. Number one, it's a crisis. Face it. Let it be what it is, not more, not less, according to the limits of our knowledge and understanding. If you maximize it, you will worry needlessly. If you minimize it, you will not do what is needed. There's no turning back nor running away. A crisis is one step at a time on an unknown path into an unknown future. Number two, it is difficult, accept it. Many will suffer physically, mentally, relationally, socially, financially, existentially, and spiritually. There is no point in trying to persuade yourself and others that all is well. It is not. Be honest, be real, be true. A crisis brings out the best and the worst in us. Therefore, be patient, kind, and compassionate with others and with yourself. Number three, what you do makes a difference. Be intentional about it. Stay connected with God and with people you care about. Maybe it's time for some of those deeper conversations. Take care of yourself and what is around you. The outside impacts how you feel on the inside. Move daily for at least 30 minutes. Enjoy the sun. It not only brightens the sky, it also brightens the mind. Dust off those cookbooks and try out some new recipes. Eat plenty of fresh vegetables, fruits, and other whole foods. Go to bed early to wake up refreshed in the morning. Laugh frequently. Humor is a good way to buffer pain and release tension. Cry when needed. Crying is also a good way to release tension and to communicate to others that you are suffering. Take care of others. It will help you keep things in perspective and give you a pause from your own worries and troubles. Number four, it's time for reflection. Enter into it. We live in a world so rushed that each waking moment may be filled with something. This leaves little time to think, to reflect, to feel, to talk, and to connect. Allow spaces of time to open up. Don't stuff time with whatever is at hand. Allow reflection to enter. Am I living the life I want to live? What are the real values and priorities of my life? Put first things first. Is it work? Is it money? Is it health? Is it friends? Is it family? Is it God? Number five, there is hope. Embrace it. As long as there is life, there is hope. And for Christians, even death is not the end. Trust that God works for the good of those who love him. Finally, as the Apostle Paul says in the Bible, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guide your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus.